do I have an easy breakfast or brunch recipe. Perfect for Mother's Day coming right around the corner. Creme brulee French toast, and it's a very easy recipe. You can use any type of thick bread, or you can use like a brioche loaf, which I'm gonna use today. It's a sweet flavored loaf of bread, so it's like yummy. Now, if you're using French bread or you're using brioche loaf or any type of bread, you wanna make sure you lay it out and dry it out somewhat. I'm using a 12 by 18 sheet pan, and that's what I'm gonna be using to make the creme brulee French toast. Now, I've just put a piece of parchment paper on it to catch any crumbs from the bread, and then I just laid a rack on it. I'm gonna lay the bread out and start letting that dry out. Now, I'm not gonna use the end right here. We can use that for bread crumbs. You can double this recipe and do two sheet pans if you wanna do that also. I'm gonna let this sit out and dry out on the tops and the bottoms of the bread there. That will help absorb our egg custard that we're gonna make to saturate into the bread. All right, let's create the magic part of this dish, which is really easy. In a medium skillet, I've got it over medium heat, we're going to add half a cup of butter. Now, I'm using salted butter, whatever you have on hand. If you wanna use unsalted butter, you can. All right, we're gonna start melting this down. And while that's happening, we're gonna go ahead and start packing one cup of brown sugar. This is a light brown sugar. So I'm just gonna start putting it into one cup, packing it in there. All right, we're gonna add that to our butter. We're gonna mix this together. We want this nice and smooth, and that butter melted into the sugar. All right, that's nice and smooth. Go ahead and turn off your burner. I'm gonna bring over my dried bread, and what I'm gonna do is remove the rack with the bread on it, set that off to the side, and then we're gonna pour our brown sugar butter mixture all over the parchment paper. And just start in the middle. Scrape it out. You wanna do this quickly. You don't wanna leave that in there because it'll turn into caramel, and you wanna do it quickly. Cover the whole parchment. All right all nice and covered. All right, bring your dry bread back over and we're gonna place it in our pan, kind of like we had it when it was drying out. All right, we're gonna set this aside. We're gonna go ahead now and make that delicious custard and give it some yumminess to it. In a medium bowl or a large mixing bowl, we're gonna crack in six eggs. Go ahead and beat these together. Just using a wire whisk. Kind of give it a head start on this custard. Okay, we're gonna add in some milk. Now we need one and a half cups. I've got one cup of milk and then I've got half a cup of heavy whipping cream. Whatever combination you want, as long as you get one and a half cups. All right, we're gonna add that. We're gonna add in two tablespoons of maple syrup. Now you can use the 100% maple syrup or you can even just use your breakfast syrup if you like that. Ooh, that came out a little fast. <laughs> there we go. We're gonna add in one teaspoon of vanilla extract. We gotta flavor this up. Now, you can either go in with another teaspoon of vanilla extract to really give it some vanilla flavor, or you can switch it up to an orange extract or almond extract just for a little bit of flavor. So we're gonna do half a teaspoon of orange extract. Give it a little orange flavor to it for Mother's Day, right? When y'all smell that, it smells like the inside of an orange. I'm not kidding. Now we're gonna add quarter teaspoon of salt. All right, let's whisk this all together. That's good. Let's bring our bread back over. 
All right, we're going to take a large spoon, and go into the mixture, and we're just going to kind of saturate the bread. You don't want to pour it all over, so we're going to let it soak into that one piece of bread like that. We really want to get a saturation on this. Kind of let it pool in the center, and then just push down. We're going to keep doing that until we get all the bread saturated. Now if you have any egg mixture left over, you can certainly just add another egg and then scramble it up, whatever you want to do, and then add it with your creme brulee French toast. I'm going to go back to the beginning ones, add more. I'm going to let these rest on the countertop for about 15-20 minutes just to absorb everything. We're going to add some ground cinnamon to the top if you'd like, it's optional. I've got my oven preheated at 350 degrees. We're going to pop these in there for about 25 minutes until they're golden brown. Don't leave me yet, you guys. We still got to do the creme brulee part and it's very easy. 25 minutes is up. I've just pulled these out of the oven. Keep your oven on and turn it up to about a 450 or 475. Now, you want to move quick with these, so what we're going to do is take them and we're going to flip them over. Just like that, where that brown sugar butter is on the top. Look at that, you guys. <laughs> Who's excited? Use two of these to kind of help you so you don't splatter them down. I'm going to place these back in the oven that's been heated at a 450 to 475 or under your broiler. And it should take just a few minutes to get this nice and caramelized on the top and kind of golden brown. I'll be back. There we go. There is my creme brulee French toast served up with some syrup, some butter that's melting over them, and some crisp bacon that I cooked during the process of my creme brulee French toast in the oven. It is breakfast time and I grabbed somebody. Oh yeah. <laughs> to help me make breakfast this morning. He likes to call it the pancake of many names. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a true name for this? We call it Dutch Baby. I've heard it also called a German pancake, a fluffy pancake. So we're going to be making it in a 9 by 13 baking dish. Mainly a lot of people like to use it in a cast iron skillet. But, you know, I know a lot of people have a baking dish here, so we're going to do that. Now Joseph has the butter over here, and this thing calls for a lot of butter. Oh yeah. And when I say a lot of butter, he's going to cut six tablespoons of butter and just place it around the baking dish. Sounds good to me. So while he's doing that, we do have our oven preheating to 425 degrees. And we're also going to put bacon in the oven, which will cook at that same temperature in almost the same amount of time. Okay, while the oven is preheating, we're going to go ahead and place our 9 by 13 baking dish into the oven and let that butter start melting. While the butter is melting in the oven, let's take a large bowl. We're going to add the dry ingredients, which will contain one cup of all-purpose flour. We're going to dig deep, shake it off, and then just place it into our large mixing bowl. We're going to add a quarter cup of white granulated sugar. And then we're going to add half a teaspoon of salt. And then I'm going to have Joseph whisk this all together. Oh yeah. And get it nice and blended. Joseph will be the first one down here when there's breakfast. Shh. <laughs> he said, <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> So our oven is already preheated at the 425, so just keep an eye on the butter. All right, we're going to go ahead now and take the baking dish out of the oven that has the butter in it. We're going to set it on the stovetop. Now that our dry ingredients are whisked up, we're going to go ahead now and add six eggs. We're going to crack them one at a time into a small bowl. That way we don't get any shells and have to dig through the flour for them. So, yeah, all right, Joseph. That wouldn't be fun. No. <laughs> so he's going to get started with that. Yep. I've got some vanilla extract. We're going to put in about one teaspoon. Okay, while he's doing the rest of the eggs, I'm going to go ahead and add one cup of milk. Sounds good. Just 
Joseph's going to whisk this batter all together really good until it's nice it and good. smooth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice and smooth. All right, Joseph's going to bring over our baking dish that has the melted butter in it. The dish is still hot, so make sure you have your mitts on. All right, we're going to pour it all in. Oh, yeah. Oh, what do y'all think? It's like a waterfall of deliciousness. <laughs> <laughs> He's hilarious. Okay, we're going to place this in the oven that's still on the 425 degrees. We're going to bake this for about 20, 22 minutes. Just keep an eye on it and make sure that the sides all puff up. It's going to be bigger on the sides than it will be on the center. Joseph and I are going to get the bacon ready to put in the oven at the same temperature and it'll go in for about 18 to 20 minutes. So when you cook bacon in the oven, make sure that you use a sheet pan that has a nice size lip going around it, like that here. I've got some parchment paper on it. There we go, Joseph. Lay it out. There we go. All right, when we're putting the bacon in, you want to be really quick about it. We don't want to lose too much heat in the oven for that Dutch baby. Okay, we're just getting ready to pull this out of the oven. Now, I just laid a piece of foil over the top of it at the very end to keep it from burning on the edges. I'm going to show you how we're going to serve this up. All right, we got our breakfast spread right here. That is our Dutch baby, our... Pancake of many names. <laughs> <laughs> the German pancake. The fluffy pancake. There you go. <laughs> Whatever you know it by, there it is right there. Really simple and easy to put together. Our bacon got done at the same time. I've got some powdered sugar. You know, people like that on there. We've got some maple syrup, and then we got fresh blueberries. I am getting ready to make some croissant omelet boats. We're going to take fresh bakery style croissants and we're going to load it up with our favorite omelet ingredients and then bake these in the oven. The first step is to get your meat prepared if you are going to put some into your omelets. We are going to start off with our croissant. And you're just going to need a steak knife. We're going to cut around, circle out. Don't cut all the way to the bottom. We want that egg mixture to stay in all the way to the other end. And then what we're going to do is just pull it out. That way you have an opening. Nice little boat. Y'all let me know down below in the comments section what you'd want to put in your omelet boats. Now we generally buy a whole pack of these at Costco, but you can also get these in like a pack of four at your local grocery store. You can make as many as you want with these. All right, we're going to move these off to the side and we're going to come in and cut our peppers and onion. I'm going to dice these very fine. I'm just going to go with two sides each pepper. I've already got my green onions cleaned off, so I'm just going to take off the ends. And then we'll start slicing these small. So I'm going to put some bacon on my cutting board and go ahead and have that chopped up also. There we go. We're going to go ahead now and make our egg mixture. So I'm going to crack in four eggs. I'm thinking one egg for each croissant. I'm going to add a quarter cup of milk. Or you can use half and half or heavy whipping cream. Sprinkle in a little bit of garlic powder, give it a little flavor. About an eighth of a teaspoon. I'm going to go in with a pinch of salt and a pinch of black pepper. Take a whisk, blend it all together. We're going to be using a sheet pan. We're going to place some parchment on it or you can place some foil on it. I'm going to grab my croissant boats, just lay them on the parchment. We're going to take our egg mixture, we're going to pour it into each of the boats. So you want to divide it kind of equally. We're going to go ahead now and fill it with some diced peppers, some green onions, some bacon. I'm going to sprinkle some cheese on top. Put some more peppers on top, some green onion. 
finish up any more egg mixture I have. I've got my oven preheated at 375 degrees. I'm going to place this in there for about 22 minutes until the eggs are set and everything is cooked through. Here are my croissant omelet boats. Just using a small bread knife or you can use a steak knife just to kind of cut through. Oh, look at that pocket of goodness in there. This is a classic quiche recipe. I'm going to show you my style. Y'all let me know what your style is. We're going to take some pork sausage. Now this is by Jimmy Dean and it's, I love the flavor of it for a quiche. We're going to be using about half a pound. Now you want to make sure you cook your meat first before you put it into the quiche because it's not going to take long for a quiche to cook. I'm going to put this on a medium heat. I'm going to add a quarter of an onion that I've diced up, very small, and I'm just going to cook that with the sausage. So let's break it up. Now I am going to be sauteing down some spinach in with my sausage once that it is browned all the way through. So that's the trick to a quiche, is you want to make sure your meat is cooked through and your vegetables are cooked through, whatever you're putting in there. Now, if you have my first cookbook, this recipe is in there, and that's this one right here, which is making home cooking simple, easy, and delicious. Other than that, this recipe is found in my recipe blog, katherinesplates.com. The sausage is browned and all broken up. We're gonna go ahead and add about two to three ounces of fresh spinach. Once it starts cooking down, we're gonna turn off the heat. We're gonna let that residual heat from the, the sausage and the pan finish wilting down the spinach. We're gonna take the mixture and we're going to place it into our pie crust. Now I'm just using a frozen nine inch pie crust. Just pulled it right out of my freezer. So we're just gonna loosely place it into the bottom of the crust. There we go. Let's set this aside and we're gonna make that egg mixture. We're gonna crack in six eggs into a medium bowl. Now these are just the large eggs. These feels like extra large eggs to me. Nope, large eggs, okay. We're gonna add in three quarters cup of milk. One and a half cups of shredded cheddar cheese. We're going to add in a little bit of black pepper. We're just seasoning this to taste. Eighth of a teaspoon to a quarter of a teaspoon. Now salt, we're going to go a little less because we've got all that cheese in there. So we'll go in with about a quarter teaspoon. Take your whisk. Let's blend this all together. Yeah, we're putting the cheese in the eggs. That way it disperses better. Placed the pie plate on a sheet pan. That way we don't have any dribbles off the edge there. Let's go ahead and add it over the sausage. All right, now don't overfill. Keep an eye on your mixture here. Kind of move it around a little bit. Pull up some of that spinach a little bit. Make it look pretty. I've got my oven preheating at 375 degrees. We're gonna place this in the oven and bake it for 35 to 45 minutes. You wanna make sure that that egg mixture is set. Keep an eye on it. If you need to put a little foil around the edges of your pie crust before it's done, then you can do that to keep it from over browning. I'll be back. Pulled it out at the 35 minute mark. I let it rest for 10 minutes. I'm gonna take my knife, let's cut through. My classic quiche. Let's make an English muffin breakfast casserole. Let's bake the perfect bacon. Preheat oven, 425. We're gonna be using a large sheet pan that has a lip on it. Lay some parchment paper down. Get your favorite bacon, let's line the pan. Place it in your oven. 15 to 18 minutes. While the bacon is in the oven, we're gonna go ahead and get our English muffins ready to put in the oven also. That way they can get nice and crisp for our casserole. Just cut them in bite-sized pieces. I'm gonna be doing six standard size English muffins. So these are not refrigerated or frozen. They're just a regular standard English muffin that sits on your countertop. All right, we're just gonna have a sheet pan ready that's lined with some parchment paper. We're gonna place 
our English muffin bites on top. Try to get it into a single layer if you can. We want to get these nice and toasty. We're going to place these in the oven. It's already preheated at 425 degrees and has the bacon in it. We're going to cook these for 12 minutes. I've pulled my bacon out and it's still got a few more minutes to cook, but what we're going to do is give it a nice flavor. I have some pure maple syrup. I'm just going to put it into a little bowl. I'm going to take my brush and we're going to brush it on the bacon. This will wake up the casserole for sure. This is going to go back in the oven for five minutes until you get the desired crispness of your bacon. Pull the bacon out of the oven. You're going to lay it on a paper plate with some paper towels on it to drain the bacon. Let's make the egg mixture. In a large bowl, we're going to go ahead and crack 12 eggs. Let's see. All right, and that's all. We're going to add two and a half cups of milk. We're going to add one teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon black pepper, quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, quarter teaspoon onion powder. We're going to whisk it all together. Make sure it's nice and fluffy. All right, so we've got all the components ready, so let's go ahead and build this casserole. All right, I'm going to take my baking dish and I'm going to coat it with some butter. Go up the sides, into the corners, that way you keep everything from sticking. All right, here's my delicious baked maple bacon. We're going to cut our bacon into bite-sized pieces. Should have about 10 pieces. Okay, we're going to place half of our bacon on the bottom of our baking dish. We're going to place one cup of shredded cheddar cheese on top of the bacon. We're going to take our crunchy English muffin cubes, place it all on top of the cheese in a single layer. Just fill it in. We're going to pour all of that egg mixture all over the English muffin cubes. We're going to use a fork and just press down the English muffin cubes into the egg mixture. Let it soak it all up. We're going to let it sit for 15 minutes to let it finish absorbing up the egg mixture. Or you can put this in the refrigerator for one hour up to overnight before you bake it. I'm going to sprinkle the rest of the bacon on top. We're going to top with another cup of shredded cheese. Now this is where I'm going to come in and use this spicy Mexican blend. It's got shredded Monterey Jack cheese, jalapeno peppers, and cheddar cheese. Give it a little kick or just keep it mild. Now, I don't want to cover up the bacon because we want to be able to see the bacon. We're going to sprinkle some chopped green onion across the top. Give it a nice pop of color. It'll add a nice freshness to the dish also. Okay, I've lowered my oven temperature to 350 degrees. We're going to place our English muffin breakfast casserole in there for about 60 minutes until the eggs are nice and set. Okay, mine took 60 minutes. What you want to do is place a knife in about three spots in your casserole, pull it out, make sure the egg on it is not wet. Let it sit on your countertop for about 10 to 15 minutes to kind of pull itself together. Now, while you have it in the oven, if you feel like your top of your casserole is getting kind of too brown, you can put some foil over it while it's finished cooking. Today I'm going to show you how to make sausage, egg, and cheese pull-apart breakfast anytime you want it. We're going to start off by cooking our breakfast meat. Now I'm using 8 ounces of a Jimmy Dean breakfast sausage or you can even cook up 6 pieces of bacon and you can just fry it up in a pan. 
So I'm going to cut this right here because this is 16 ounces, but we only need half of that. I'm just going to place it into a medium skillet. We're going to place this on a medium heat and get this going. We want to brown it up. Use my meat chopper, break it up. Right. While that's happening, I'm just going to give it a little bit of vegetable. So I've got a, a green bell pepper and a red onion, and I'm just going to cut half of each. So we'll start with the bell pepper. We're going to cook it in with the sausage and get the bell pepper nice and soft. So I'm just going to take two sides off of my bell pepper, cut strips, and then we're going to cut the strips into pieces. If you want to do spinach, you can put spinach in. If you want to do ham, you can bypass the sausage and the bacon and chop up some ham. There we go. All right, let's add that to the sausage. And then we're going to cut up half of that red onion. This is going to give it color, some flavor. All right, I'm just going to take off that outer layer. Hope everyone is having a good morning. This is great to put together, especially for the holidays, for breakfast. You can even do this for nighttime. A lot of people eat breakfast for dinner. I'm one of them. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing is just following the lines of the onion here, making small slices. We're just gonna turn it around and then just cut through the slices. And that's going to be our dices. And then we'll just go ahead and add this to the sausage and the bell pepper and get that cooking down. You want to make sure that your meat is cooked and your vegetables are softened down for this recipe. It won't cook long in the oven, so you don't want to depend on it to soften this down or cook your meat. Don't do that. All right, let's go ahead and add it. Ooh, when you start cooking sausage, it smells delicious. We're going to come back as soon as the sausage is browned up and the vegetables are nice and soft. While the sausage is browning up and the vegetables are getting softened, we're going to take some cooking spray. You want to make sure you spray very well the bottom and the sides of your bunt pan. Nooks and crannies. Now I'm just going to place it on my sheet pan. I don't know if y'all can see that. Got a black on black surface there. We're going to add three tablespoons of butter to the bunt pan. I think I'm going to add a little bit of butter because that sausage is pretty dry. Now we're going to put our oven at 350 degrees. I'm going to put the bunt pan in there that's on top of this sheet pan. And we're going to put it in there and allow the butter to melt while it's preheating. Ooh, that smells delicious. Now that it's all browned up and our vegetables are softened down, we're going to turn off the heat. And then we're going to crack three eggs into a large bowl. Let's see. And one more. I'm going to add in about an eighth of a cup of milk. This is a quarter of a cup, so I'm going to go half of that. Season to taste. Got some salt. We're going to say eighth of a teaspoon. Black pepper. There we go. Eighth of a teaspoon. Yeah, I'm gonna put in some garlic powder, very little bit, but it's flavor. And I always put in smoked paprika. And to enhance the onion, I'm gonna put in some onion powder. You should always flavor your eggs good, like a restaurant. There we go. I'm right, gonna take a whisk, beat the eggs up. Once you get your eggs whisked up, 
We're going to go ahead and add the cooked sausage, peppers, and onions. We're going to add in some sharp cheddar cheese shredded, two-thirds cup. Now the oven is preheated. We're going to go ahead and remove our bunt pan. All right, be careful when you do it. We're going to set it on the stove. Leave the oven preheated. All right, yeah, that's what we're looking for right there. All right, let's mix this together. We're gonna bring over one can of Grand's Flaky Layered Biscuits. There's eight of them in here. So this is one pound or 16 ounces. So we're gonna remove them from the can. All right, take them out. Cut the biscuit in half. Cut the halves in half. We have four pieces. And then we're going to cut those into pieces. So you should have eight pieces from one biscuit. And then we're going to place them into the bowl and give them a mix. Nice and coated. That way they won't stick on each other. Just like that. And that's it. There you go. And it's important that you mix after each biscuit. That way they don't stick to each other. All right, I'll bring you back when I get all of these chopped up. Okay, we're at the end here. Just make sure you don't smush your biscuits in there. You want them all loose so that these can be pulled apart at the end. All right, we're gonna give this one more toss. Bring over your bunt pan. All right. Now we're going to start placing our coated biscuits into the bottom of our dish. Now keep them fluffy in there. Don't smash. Loosely place them in. Ooh, this is going to be good. Now if you want to put like red bell peppers in here also for Christmas time and give it Christmas colors, ooh, that would be so good. All right, do not smash. All right, we're gonna bring the pan back over. Place this on top. It's gonna go into the oven that's already preheated at the 350 degrees. We're gonna cook this for 25 to 27 minutes until the biscuits are golden brown, nice and puffy, and you wanna make sure that they are cooked all the way through. Just take a toothpick, go into the center of them and make sure that they're not gummy. If they are, just put them back in finish cooking it off. You can even lay some foil over the top if it's getting too brown before the biscuits are cooked. Doesn't that look delicious? Just pull this out of the oven. We're going to let it sit for just a few minutes in the pan to absorb any of the butter that's laying around. Who's ready for this sausage, egg, and cheese pull-apart breakfast? Take a spoon. I'm going to go along the edges. That way we know it's going to pop out. Go all the way down to the bottom. You want to go along the edges of the flute. Now you're going to take your serving plate. You're going to flip it upside down on top of your pan. We're going to grab it from underneath the handles on top of the plate. Squeeze hard and flip. Give it a shake. You'll hear it pop down. Oh, doesn't that look good? I'm going to take a little bit of parsley, sprinkle it on top. Or you can put green onions on it, some chives. We're just giving it a little pop of color. Let's pull apart this breakfast sausage, egg, and cheese. Pull apart breakfast. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're going to start by preparing the puff pastry sheets. Now, you want to follow the directions on the back of the package to prepare these and get these ready. They come frozen. They take about 40 minutes to thaw just on your countertop, or you can put them in the microwave and just follow that instruction. I'm just gonna lightly flour a work surface, and we're gonna unroll it. Now it's generally folded into threes, and there should be two sheets in there. So we'll work with one and put this off to the side. Now it has paper sheets that separate the folds, so just go ahead and pull those off. So what we're going to do is cut this into nine pieces. 
it's already, since it's folded, we're going to use the fold lines as a measuring tool here. I'm just going to take a sharp knife and cut down that fold line. Let's see, I'm just going to use the other sheet to help measure, and then we're going to cut this way. And that will give you nine squares. That's how fast you can make the dough. Now, to make this even easier, we're going to be using something called almond paste. You can use an almond filling, or you can even go online to Google or Pinterest and find a quick recipe on how to make your own almond paste. But we're keeping it easy today. Now, it comes in just a log shape, and this is the box that I'm using right here. The ingredients in the paste, it's almonds, sugar, water, and then a natural enzyme to preserve it. Okay, so this was a seven ounce package. So I'm just gonna take my sharp knife, cut through the end. Okay, what we're gonna do is get about two teaspoons per square. I'm just gonna cut thin slices like that. Take one square of the pastry dough and on one side of it, you're gonna put the almond paste. So you wanna make sure that you leave enough room that you can fold the dough over the paste. So just keep your paste when you cut it thin. Cut it in half lengthwise and then just place it on one side of your dough, leaving an edge. Okay, we're gonna start giving them that bear claw look. Go ahead and have a sheet pan ready and just line it with some parchment paper. Have a fork ready and then just have a sharp knife. What we're gonna do, you're gonna take one edge of the puff pastry, you're gonna flip it over the paste and then seal it on all edges. So take the edge, go over the paste, seal it. You're gonna take your knife and we're going to make just four slits at the top, about half an inch apart. Now if you want to use your fork, press down and then just pull out like that. Okay, what we're doing is creating a bear paw. I'm just placing these on the baking sheet lined with parchment paper. And you just want to kind of bend them and I just kind of pinch in the middle just a little bit that way the lines that we cut kind of open up so we're going to be pushing the edges that we sealed inward like that it'll kind of open up the cut lines that we made Y'all, these are so fun to make. Okay, I separated an egg, and I have the egg yolk in a small bowl here, and I just put in about a teaspoon of water, blending this up really good. We're gonna take a pastry brush, and then we're gonna coat each one of these. You're gonna wake up the house with these once they start baking, and they smell them. Mm. Almond, yep. All right, we've got to give them some sliced almonds on the top. That's that signature look, right? Okay, I'm gonna place these in my oven that's been preheating at 
400 degrees for around 15 to 18 minutes until they're nice and golden brown. We still have to finish this off. While those are in the oven, I'm going to go ahead and do that last batch right here. Oh, look at those. Mm. Okay, what we're going to do is immediately move these off of the pan and put them on a cooling rack and let these cool completely. Don't those look cute? Once these cool, I'm going to show you how we're going to top these off. Okay, what I did was I took the rack that the bear claws were cooling on and I placed them into the baking sheet again and I just put some parchment underneath there. That way when we make the drizzle and pour it over them, the drizzle can land on that parchment paper and then you can just toss that easy clean up. We're going to make the drizzle in a small bowl. I have one cup of powdered sugar and I'm just going to use a whisk. We're going to add in about one tablespoon of milk at a time until we get to the consistency that we need. All right, let's add a little bit more. What's great about making this drizzle is that if you put too much milk, you can always add some extra powdered sugar. Just keep stirring it and pulling it up and seeing if you get to that drizzle. I'm going to give it a little flavor by adding about half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Let's drizzle these on the bear claws that we have cooled down. I want y'all to look at these. Look how golden brown these are. That's what they should look like on the back side. And the almonds have toasted while they were in the oven. Alright, and then just take it. And drizzle it over it. Okay, we're going to bring the other ones over, drizzle those. We're going to have 18 delicious mini bear claws. Okay, I'm just going to give it like one or two minutes just to set up. Today I'm going to show you how to make breakfast pinwheels. So I've got my oven preheating at 425 degrees and I'm going to lay out my bacon on a sheet pan. Now my sheet pan has a big lip around it that will keep the grease from the bacon from dripping into your oven. And then I've lined it with some parchment paper. Eight pieces of bacon will be fine for this recipe. We're going to pop this in the oven for about 15 to 18 minutes until you get that desired crispness of your bacon. I'm going to go ahead and get this in since this takes the longest and then we're going to go ahead and start making our eggs. Turn a skillet on a medium high heat. We're going to add one tablespoon of butter and you want to bring that to a, a sizzle. In a medium bowl we're going to crack eight eggs. Yeah, we're going to do that really quick too because the butter's melting. A little bit of salt, about an eighth of a teaspoon is good. Some black pepper. Ooh, I like to flavor my eggs with a little bit of onion powder just right across the top. Some garlic powder, very little, just a pinch. All right, let's go in with our egg beater or whisk. We're ready to add our eggs into our pan with the hot butter. We're going to let it set around the sides for just a minute and just take your spatula, just pull the eggs into the center, let them set again, and then just keep doing that until you have a lot of cooked egg right in the center. All right, that looks good. We're going to turn off the burner, just let them sit there for just a minute. We're going to go ahead now and start rolling our pinwheels. I am using an eight ounce tube of crescent roll dough it's in the sheet form. So I'm just going to be using a clean work surface. Open up my dough. We're going to put a little bit of flour on our work surface and just spread that around. That'll help prevent the dough from sticking. Place our dough sheet right on our work surface. Roll it out. Now I'm just going to take my rolling pin, just flour it a little bit. We're going to even out our rectangle. Now you don't want it too thin. All right, we're going to start with a layer of our eggs. 
I'm going to leave a one inch border without eggs. This looks really good right here. Now we're going to take our delicious bacon. You want to make sure that's kind of cooled down and drained. Just break it into pieces all over the egg. We're going to take some shredded cheese, sprinkle it all on top. This is a sharp cheddar. And now what we're going to do is roll this. Start on the long end towards you. Just pick up the dough, pull it over, and then we're just going to keep rolling. Keep it tight. There we go. That's why I love that dough sheet. Make sure before we start cutting our pinwheels that you have your pan ready to go. Now I'm using an 11 by 18 sheet pan and I just lined it with some parchment paper. You can either use a bread knife, some dental floss. Now you want to make sure that you have the original. You don't want minty on your pinwheels. Or you can use your pastry scraper and cut straight through. But all right, let's go ahead and get started. And we're going to go up underneath all the way to the middle right there. Now what you want to do is cross your thread and then cut really fast. Just like that. Now you can also use your bread knife and we're going to cut this in half. You can use your pastry scraper. You can put it right here and then just drive down really quick. There you go. I'm going to cut off the end right here. What we're going to do, start taking them and placing them on our sheet pan that you've prepared. That way you can see all the layers. Now make sure you give these room to grow. So give some space. Ah, oh, look at that. I've got my oven preheated at 375 degrees. We're going to bake these for about 11 to 13 minutes. Now make sure that your crescents are cooked through nice and brown. I'm going to be back. Okay, we pulled these out of the oven. It took about 15 minutes to get to this right here. It is nice and golden brown on the bottom of them. Oh, they look delicious. I'm just putting on some green chives. Give it another pop of color. My Breakfast Crescent Pinwheels. Give me a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that bell notification. That way, you'll always know when shows like this one here are posted. I'll see y'all on the next episode.